Hey everybody, Rosemutter here, and uh, welcome to part 46 of my Umineko Let's Play. It's good to be back. I hope you guys are excited for me to get back into Umineko, especially because I left off on such a cliffhanger, such a crazy episode, which was Jessica and George taking their test, the conclusion of that, while uh, the hostages broke out of their prison. And uh, despite how like crazy it got, it, uh, it really got hype. It seemed like George and Jessica might just win their test, but unfortunately that was not to be, and it ended, at least from what we could see, with George and Jessica killing each other by accident. Whether that actually happened, I don't know. And unfortunately, uh, the hostages, despite breaking out of their cell, did not survive. And it ended with a very heartbreaking conversation between Kyrie and Badler, so... Uh, everybody's pretty much dead now, uh, and it's just Badler and, uh, Maria left, from what I can remember, and, uh, Kumasawa and Goda, if they're still alive. So, uh, Badler and Maria, I guess, are gonna get their test next, uh, and I'm really excited to see how this goes, so let's get back into it. Let's finally get back to Umineko. どうしてバトラーが怒ってるのかわかんないよ。わかるだろ。みんな殺されたんだぞ。あのクソジジイに。ベアトリーチェ復活の儀式とか、わけのわかんないことを言った。なら、これで13人が生贄に捧げられて。
Which meant there was only one person. It had to be Kinzo. As she happily chatted with the person on the other end of the phone, Maria slowly turned to face Badler. And with an unsettling expression on her face, she laughed with a kee hee 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 hee. It felt almost as though the person on the other end of the line was chatting about Badler. Maria, Badler couldn't imagine that this was the case. After all, it was inconceivable that Maria would be having such a friendly talk with Kinzo, chatting to him about Badler with that eerie smile on her face. Just what kind of person could be on the phone? Who could make Maria chat with a smile like that? At the time, in the back of his mind, the words Kiri had spoken to him drifted up. Even if a witch does appear, there's no need to doubt it. Just believe in its existence. <laughs> After getting the consent of the person on the other end, she held the receiver out to Badler. Hi. Maria held the receiver out for him to take, as though it were perfectly normal. Badler felt just a little bit of hesitation towards taking the receiver. Because, by acknowledging the existence of the person at the other end, he would have no choice but to admit it. Kyrie had said it. There is no longer any need to doubt their existence. See, this almost feels like something that, uh, if Beatrice were to set up this game board, to have her tell Kyrie outright, tell to tell Badler to stop denying witches, it feels like a bit of a power move. I don't know, I just, I can't imagine Kyrie saying something like that, but... I don't know. Badler took the receiver. After he did so, Maria briskly had headed for the door. Badler, who was slightly fearful about finding out for sure who was at the other end of the receiver, questioned Maria before taking the call. That doesn't matter. It seems like everybody died every time anyway. Uh, the only person that ever made it out alive from what I can remember is, um... Uh, Ava. There were some people... There are some people who are like said that they were missing and were never found, but presumed to be bit dead. But Ava, I think, was the only one who actually made it out and was confirmed alive at the end. And that's because she solved the epitaph. <laughs> Badler stretched out his hand, uh, stretched his hand out to Maria's back as she left, but the cord of the receiver he was gripping held him back like a chain. He's like, I wish cell phones existed back then. He readied himself. Badler put the receiver to his ear. Congratulations! And I'm fine! <laughs> Is she speaking English because she's mocking him because he would speak... He would speak English when he was younger because he thought it sounded cool, I'm guessing? Screwed up, mocking English filled his ears. It was the voice of a woman he didn't know. Who? The inside of his head was starting to freeze up. Who? Yes, I'm fine! <laughs> so, 
So if this isn't, if Beatrice isn't like a witch or whatever, this is a person who knew that he would speak in English when he was younger. And that's something that the cousins talked about, but I'm sure like his other relatives knew about that too. <laughs> <laughs> that last laugh didn't sound like it was aimed at Badler. It was almost as though Kinzo was right next to the phone, cackling as well. あ、出てみろよ。ハワイへご招待するぜ。いや、どうだ。よっと。長かったぜ。うん。と。おかげさまを持ちまして。わらわ大復活。サンキュー、金蔵。特別にさっきの待った。聞いてやってもいいぜ。やれやれ。上機嫌にも程があろうが。もう少しは縮女らしく振る舞わんか。Kinzo and Beatrice sat facing each other over the chessboard on the reception table. Also on the table were expensive cheeses and the like to go with drinks. And there was a line of several empty wine bottles. As Beatrice rolled around at her sofa in an unseemly way, she held a wine glass in one hand in a good mood and probably completely drunk. <laughs> おい、おい、銀座。こんな年代物の寄付ワインなんか飾ってんなよ。1947年物かよ。今日開けなくていつ開けるつもりだ。それをアビセックスで遊ぼうぜ。空き瓶で殴り込むしよう。<笑>それは愉快だ。浮かれすぎであるぞ。羽目の外しすぎだ。金蔵だって。わらわに再会できて嬉しいだろ。ああ。シャバだ。うっしよだ。わらわの肉体万歳。<笑> さっきから何を騒いでるんだ。お前がベアトリーチだとでも言うのかよ。イエーイ。ああ、金蔵の<笑><笑><笑><笑> そんな方離せることのなんとか楽しいことか。そういえば、お前とあれだけ何度も何度も肉バレ口を叩き合ってきたのに、こうして刑務中に万丈で会話をしたのは初めてだな。何やらとても新鮮だ。お、今のポンって
そこにクソじじいも一緒にいるのかてめえらまとめてぶっ飛ばしてやら今どこにやがるんだ答えやらなんだわらわに会いたいのか<笑>モテる女はつれやでもよ金蔵がいるときにくどくのはよせよこいつマジで焼くから立ち悪いぜ金蔵のいない二人きりのときなら一人泣いたで愛してやるからよ<笑>金蔵気が変わったマリアのテストにわらわは行かないそなたが行けなんと気まぐれなではお前のベトラをテストするというのか I almost feel bad for Mari she's probably so excited to see b e a t r i c h and then she's got Kinzo instead いいだろあいつさんお前の若い時に似てるからさキュンと来ちゃうんだよ安心しろよ浮気なんかしないってあいつと二人きりになるのは今だけわらわはいつだってお前と二人きりだろうだがもうわらわを四六時中束縛するのは勘弁しろよ<笑>そういうわけだバトラーどなたのテストは悪い黄金の魔女フェアトリーゼが自ら取り行ってやろうバトルそうだこの屋敷の正面玄関にいてバトラー時期どうしろマジで頑張ってくれよどうせ金蔵なんてすぐに寿命でぽっくりいってまうバトラーが時期投手になってくれりゃお前がこの島のすべての新しい主だごめんあらは独り占めにさせてもいいんだけど金蔵の神様わらわを支配しておくれよ敷きの玄関だな。仕事だ。このクソったらない酔っ払いめ。俺がてめえの酔いを覚ましてやるぜ。迎え酒には俺の熱いパンチをくれてやる。首を洗って待ってやがる。バトラー impulsively slammed the, the receiver down. There was no need to talk to her receiver anymore. I'll meet her face to face and settle this. Oh, this should be interesting. I am wondering how much more of there is to go. There's still, like, are we going to get back to Angie at some point, too? Because this is the last question arc, and then we're going to get into the answer arcs. I took the spear I'd made by taking apart the hat stand, and went outside without even an umbrella. It's hard to imagine that the young woman calling herself Beatrice will be waiting for me alone. I should probably assume that she'll be waiting with those supporting troops that Godasan and Kumasawasan told us about. Going alone would be too reckless. Oh, is he gonna free them and bring them with? Although I don't think Goda and Kumasawa would be much help. <laughs> oh, but he is going. Let's see if they're already dead or not. I'm guessing they're dead. Even though they, they aren't needed for the ritual, they're probably just dead. I headed for the gardening storehouse first. I need all the help I can get. Goda-san's a burly man, so I could probably count on him to add some extra brawn. Kumasawa-san's knowledge and familiar familiarity with the area as a senior servant, might prove to be a huge weapon. Both of them have master keys, and they, more, they know more about the mansion than I do. They're pretty reliable allies. As I banged on the shutter and called out for them to open up, I remembered there was nothing they could do from the inside. I would have to get the key back from them and open the shutter myself. He's gonna find them dead. I went around to the side, knocked on the small latisse window there, and opened it up. Yep. Yep. I knew it. As soon as they were put into a locked room situation, they're dead. Anyone who's put into a locked room in this game is dead. Here we go. 
The scene in the shed, lit by a dim light bulb, was all too bizarre. So it looks like the only two people we have that are alive are Maria and Badler, other than Kinzo. From a low ceiling beam hung two thick ropes, and at the ends, Goda-san and Kumasawa-san were hanging by their necks. I mean, they may have killed themselves, maybe they felt in a hopeless situation and they took a pact, but I don't know. It was dim, and I was looking through a narrow gap between all the various pieces of equipment strewn about, so I couldn't make out any more detail than that. But when they showed, not even a tremor after I called out to them. And because of the way the loops around their necks seemed to carry the full weight of their bodies, I could sense no trace of life from them. So <laughs> The shutter is still closed, and there's only a single key, which I'm sure Godasan took possession of. So how did the culprit open the shutter and kill the two of them inside? No, wait, they weren't necessarily killed. If this is a suicide, that way this locked room makes sense, but I don't know why the two of them would hang themselves. Feebly, I slumped down on the spot. Now, the only humans alive on the island are me, Maria, and my old bastard's old bastard. No, there's also that nutso woman calling herself Beatrice. Maria's been acting like she's on the witch's side from the beginning, and Gramps is the very person who revived the witch. Plus, there's the witch herself. What the hell? Then, it's just as though I'm the only one on this island. Using my pole as a cane, I feebly rose to my feet. Damn, I can't do it like this. I've got to avenge everyone. That was the saddest. It's no good, no goddamn good at all I've heard from him yet. I got the crying out of the way while I could so that all my weak emotions would be squeezed out with my tears. Then, I straightened up and gazed into the darkness in the direction of the mansion. At the entrance to the mansion, the witch is waiting. I'll go and settle this. I'll find the source of this weird, blood-soaked night and crush her with my own hands. Amidst the pouring rain, I walked through the rose garden without an umbrella, letting myself get soaked. I could see the arbor in the distance. According to Jessica, it seemed that George and Iki had also been killed. Well, by this point, there's no need to worry about the lives of any hostages. I left the path, aiming for the arbor. I was he going to find their bodies, then? I saw George and Iki's weather-beaten corpse. Aniki. The corpse was in front. Oh, that's right. Jessica got teleported back to her room, didn't she? The corpse was in front of the arbor. If he could have died under the arbor, he would have at least been spared being beaten down upon by the rain. There was a gaping hole in Iki's forehead, as though he'd been shot with a gun. Perhaps because the rain had washed everything away, his face wasn't covered with blood, and so he looked almost as if he were sleeping. However, the deep red his clothes were stained still provided the evidence that a large amount of blood had flowed out. How happy I'd be if he were sleeping, or pretending to be dead. But Aniki's eyes remained open, even though the rain sprayed against them. And the hole in his forehead was, without a hint of a joke, the real thing. Alright, let's check the uh, character list here. Wow, so he's the only one who's like, I guess until a bot, someone finds the body, it's the only one who's con I Like, wow. I was expecting a lot of red here, but... Until the bodies are found by someone, I guess that they're- it's kind of like a Schrodinger's like, are they dead or not dead until it's confirmed by someone. Alright, George. Corpse discovered by the Rose Garden Arbor. There was a single hole right in the center of his forehead. It seemed reasonable to think he was shot with a gun or something. It was a brand of humiliation marking his loss to Gap. 
I'm trying to think, though. I'm trying to remember how Jessica killed him. She punched him, right? But it wouldn't have been a punch tooth. It's not like she put a hole in his head. So there we go, once again, going with a human thing, like a gun. A gun was used. And it seems to be the cause of death. So we have to go back to the human... The realistic reasoning, rather than Jessica being teleported from her room and punching him so hard that he died, right? There had been a faint chance that Godasan and Kumasawa-san hanging by their necks in the gardening shed could have been a bad joke. But that naive possibility had now been completely denied. And as I looked at this corpse, I became completely sure. Just as Godasan had once said, the enemy came to take lives as though these lives were pieces on a chessboard. <sighs> That damn witch, when she was on the phone, she talked about us like we were on the game board. The lightning caused the mansion's vast shadow to emerge. Finally, the mansion. As the massive shape came into view, there was no silhouette of any person. It seemed that there weren't any underlings waiting for me to pack or anything like that. According to Kiryu-san, there was a large number of attendants with goat heads. At least for now, I couldn't sense any large group like that hiding and staring at me. What's this? Beneath the roof of the entrance, there's something set down. It looked like the kind of small box that girls often keep trinkets in. Or maybe it was the kind of extravagant cigar case you'd find in a reception room. Either way, it didn't look like something that belonged here. It clearly looked as though I was being told to open it, but the thought of doing what they wanted me to do was somehow irritating. However, it didn't look like we'd get anywhere if I didn't open it. Could it be that it's set up with some sort of trap to make it explode when opened? While thinking things like that, and forgetting even to go under the overhang, I continued to glare at the box as the rain beat down upon me. Then, mixed in with the thunder, was some kind of music? It sounded like something like that. It was the tone of the big clock in the hall announcing midnight. It was also the sound that announced the crazy day of October 4th had finally ended, and that much more incredibly crazy day of October 5th had begun. That sound quieted, and I could hear an eerie laugh coming out of nowhere. Usually when you hear that sound, that means it's game over for everybody. I got the feeling that the voice was coming from the heavens, and I looked up at the sky. And there was a woman I'd never seen before. No, it's not true that I've never seen her before. I saw her once today, in the portrait inside the mansion. The clothes were different, but that face was just like the witch of the portrait. Ah, oh, who am I kidding? I already know who this person is. <laughs> Leaning over the second floor balcony and waving cheerily from under her umbrella was, without a doubt, the witch of the portrait, Beatrice. Was the plan for the boss to watch on from above as her goat underlings torture me to death? I adjusted my grip on the spear, and imagining goats creeping outside of the surrounding shadows and the entrance and surrounding me, I raised my guard in all directions. <laughs> あ、すいすろよ。ここには笑わと思い以外の誰もいねえぜ。ヤギの家具どももいなければ、悪魔の執事も押し尾様も、我が親友の悪魔もいない。そして、我が肉体の蘇生を手伝う黄金の蝶た
Maybe the, the test is he has to kill her. Maybe she's like, I'm coming at you without any any things to really protect me. You just have to try and kill me. If you do, you win. ま、それ そしてようやくわずかの隙間を開き、そこからわらわはビショップを送り込み、そなたのすぐ近くに近づけるようになった。しかし知っての通り、ビショップは四角のある駒だ。黒のビショップはそなたが黒木マスにとどまる限り絶
But now that she's appeared openly right before my eyes like this, my terror has actually lessened. It's funny. Ghosts are most terrifying when you can only sense them. When you can see them, and they have a face you can plant your fist into, there's nothing scary about it. However, she is definitely not a funny or a friendly person. She can kill me instantly while rolling around giggling just by snapping a finger. I... I mean, I... I agree with him, she's not a friendly person, but she is funny. <laughs> Whether we interpret the results of her snapping her fingers as magic flying at me, or underling showing up to shoot me, it doesn't matter. In any case, whether this is fantasy or mystery, that queen is in a position where she can kill me just by snapping her fingers. I see. So this is the meaning of the queen of this island, who reigns over both the white and black squares. そなたへのテストはその中に入る。町な。俺はもう今さら時期投手が誰かなんてくだらねえゲームに興味ねえぞ。ほら、わらわのこのバルコニーまで空を飛び上がってくるというのか。それは良い、それは良い。ならばほら、早く来いよ。ほら、ほら、パンパン。絶対安全な場所に嫌がるからって余裕ぶっこき上がって。今からそこ
I opened it. There was a faint smell of cigarettes. Well, it'd be kind of useless asking the same question that George and uh, Jessica were asked, considering that there's nobody left alive, so it'd be a pretty easy choice to make. <laughs> Apparently, it really had originally been a cigar case, but there was no cigarettes or cigars inside. Maybe he has to choose between himself and Maria, who's going to live. And even though he says Maria's crazy, uh, he still loves her, and I think it'd be hard for him to uh, sacrifice her. Inside, there was a western envelope with a one-winged a one eagle crust. And when I opened that, too, there was a letter inside. I looked up at the witch. She was grinning down at me. It seemed she was waiting in anticipation to see what kind of reaction I'd have to the contents. Damn it, I'll show her. Its contents were like this. Among the three mentioned below, in order to gain two, sacrifice one. One, your life. Two, Blank's life. I'm guessing that's Maria. Three, everyone else's life. Well, everyone else's life, there aren't many people left. Like, literally, Maria and Kinzo. Oh, I wonder if two is Angie, because Angie's not there. But, it's usually it's the person who's closest to you, right? The person that... And since her his parents are dead. If you do not choose one, all of the above will be lost. Hmm. <laughs> ジェシカのテストにはカノンの名字。ジョージのテストにはシャノンの名が入った。彼らについては思い人がはっきりしていたから、あらかじめ名前を記入してやれもしたが。そなたの思い人をわらわは知らん。だから誰の名をかけばい
後宮家顧問錬金術師黄金の魔女にして無限の魔女ベアトリーチャ後宮家の家督と我が黄金のすべてを継承する資格があるかどうかそれをわらわが問うそなたの名を名乗るがよい後宮バトラだ Under that majestic gaze, unimaginable from her manner a short while ago, I answered without any hesitation. She truly was, yes, indeed. In the truest sense, she was that worthy of calling herself the queen of this island. そなたがその母を受け入れられぬ気持ちは分からぬでもないしかし父親が誰と再婚しようともそなたとの血のつながりは変わらぬのではないか何が言いたい父親の再婚に反対するという父親を独占したいがゆえのそなたの幼稚も多少の理解はしようしかしそれに反抗するために後宮の名を捨てるは家と血に対する冒涜ではないのかそなたは後宮に生まれ育まれてきたのではないかその恩を忘れ後宮の名を捨てる資格がそのお前には関係ない俺と親父の問題だ後宮の名はお前と父親だけのものではないお前は知らぬ女に父親を奪われることを許せず反抗しただけの幼稚だ後宮家の席を捨て去ったこの6年間はそなたが後宮家に泥を塗りし短からぬ年月その罪深きを知るがいい<笑>幼稚で悪かったなしかし祖父母の死を境とはいえよくぞ後宮に席を戻したよってその罪を自ら見そぐ機会をそなたに与えよ今こそそなたに6年前の罪をあがなう時さあさあ思い出してごらんなさい見それを思い出し告白し懺悔せよそれこそわらわがそなたに与えるテストである That seems easy enough on the surface But what does he have to do to repent for it? <laughs> At that moment a massive thunderclap rang out making my mind go blank 懺悔せよってなんだよ謝れって言いたいのかよもうテストは始まっているぞそなたの好きに考えるがよい There were no signs from the witch's expression that she was sneering at a person unable to answer the tough question thrust upon them She was earnestly asking something of him He could even feel a quiet determination Even as the rain beat upon him Badler could not shift his eyes from her gaze The witch thrust her umbrella away She abandoned herself to the falling rain so that the rain would fall on her until Badler answered that question. Maybe the、uh, trick question is、uh, the tr an Usher Mia head would never apologize for anything. They must be stubborn till the end. They make no mistakes. <laughs> She had chosen to join him, allowing the rain to beat down on her as well until he reached an answer. For some reason, Badler could tell that. But even so, he didn't understand. Well, ma. それを言われりゃ
幼稚だったとは思うぜ何のかんの言ったって親父に育ててもらった恩は親父が再婚したからってチャラになるもんじゃねえ親父は養育費は常に送り続けてくれたそうだし学校の行事にも参加したいと言っててくれたそうだそれを俺が絶対に来させるなとじいちゃんたちに言ってたからた確かにそりゃ俺の幼稚な犯行だったとバッサリ言われりゃそれまでだぜいやでもよなのよ Man, this just literally just does feel like a confessional. This feels like just a therapy session. Oh. I wonder if Badler has a little bit of、uh, resentment towards Angie, even though he's like a good big brother and he clearly loves her. Just kind of like here, he had a little bit of resentment towards Badler. Maybe he's got some towards Angie. お前の言う通りでもあるさ浮気は事実でも俺を育ててくれた恩は確かにあったならそれを総裁して俺が家を出ていくというので十分問題ねえじゃねえかよそうさ俺にはおふくろの代わりに親父をぶん殴る権利がいや義務があったはずなんだぜそれを俺は許した何も言わずに出て行って初めから俺なんていなかったことにしてやった親父も俺のことなんか忘れてキレイさんやエンジェと新しい家族を始めたそれで丸く収まってるじゃねえか But six years passed after that time healed the anger キレイさん understood my anger as well and she tried hard to interact with me despite that and soften my heart Angie didn't know anything about the situation, and she adored me, believing I was her real big brother who just lived in a separate house. As for Dad, he was acting like nothing had happened, and told me I could come home anytime I wanted. じいちゃんの葬式の日にそしたらあいつ本当に畳に両手をついて詫びやがったよ信じらんねえくらいに情けない格好だった Is he gonna do the same thing? Is、uh, Badler gonna copy his dad? Is he gonna put both his hands on the ground in the rain and apologize? あの格好つけた親父が本気で頭を下げやがったんだぜ<笑>それを見たらなんだかもうバカらしくなっちまったきっとおふくろもそう思っただろうぜおふくろは俺と親父が喧嘩をするといつも笑いながら仲裁してくれてなんだそんなくだらないことで喧嘩をしていたのと笑ってくれた俺はおふくろがそう言って笑っているのを感じたんだよだから許すとまでは言えなかったけどもう一度ゼロから始めてもいいかなって思ったんだよそれで6年前に全てを巻き戻すことにしたそれで後宮家に席を戻したんだよ俺も6年間泣き怒り悩み抜いたひょっとするとそれは親父もそうだったろうし死んだおふくろもそうだったかもしれないあるいは切り絵さんやエンジェもそうだったかもしれないだからゼロに戻し後ろ宮バトラに戻ったんだそれは俺たち家族の問題であって後ろ宮家とかそんなのは何も関係ねえそれを罪だと断じる資格はお前にないしそれをお前に懺悔する義務も俺にはない
もしそれを本当にすべき相手がいたとしたらそれはお前がもう全員殺しただから俺は何も謝らない懺悔しないそれが俺のこのテストへの答えだ I had pretty much fully responded to her provocation, and I was sure that I'd vented out all the stuff I'd been keeping inside my chest, stuff I hadn't wanted to show anyone. That was what the witch was supposedly been hoping for, too. This is what I'm saying. Like, what if all this, all the killing of everybody was just to get Badler in a very vulnerable state, just so that we, she could have this talk with him? This was all just a big therapy session. All of this. And yet, the witch's blank expression didn't change in the slightest. I had been sure she would start cackling and guffawing, sneering at my childish, foolish, and shameful past. It's almost like she wants Badler to apologize to her, whoever this Beatrice is, for some reason. Like, I feel like she's kind of taken this personally. Like, she's upset, like, that's all you have to apologize for? Isn't there something else? But to the contrary, I could feel a sense of shock about her. Something you could almost call disappointment. Yeah, it feels like there's something that she wants him to apologize for and he's not, and she's disappointed. それだけも何も。俺はアライザラよ、ぶちまけだぜ。何が不満なんだよ。まだ罪の生産が足りぬ。生産？なんだよ。親父みたいにここにどけ出して謝れってのかよ。違う。お前たち家族のお前の家での話になど興味はない。ここはどこだ。六軒島だ。後宮本家の本宅である。この場所にふさわしい。Okay. Okay. Alright, so it's something to do with Rokunjima specifically. Something personal. It seems very personal. Okay. So I did something to her. Beatrice, I'm guessing? Or if we're talking human terms, someone that is taking on the uh, persona of Beatrice. Battler did something to that person. And the fact he can't remember is itself something that she's annoyed with. Oh my gosh. So if I, re so if I remember what it is, if Valor remembers it, all of this will hopefully be done. Maybe that's the key to all this. Beatrice is making Badler repeat this over and over again to get him to remember this ultimate sin that he did to her or to somebody. <laughs> yes, that's right, because the last time... Yeah, the last time he was here was six years ago. He was, what, 12 years old? What could he have possibly done to, as a 12-year-old to piss someone off so badly? Okay, let's go through the potential people. So it has to be someone, something happened on Rokunjima during the family conference, I'm guessing. Uh, so, Maria? Did he do something to Maria? Because Maria... Maria and Beatrice seem to be very connected. And it, Beatrice, a lot of the time, she wants to get revenge Specifically for Maria. She likes to punish people that hurt Maria. But Maria would only have been, what, four years old? What could Balor possibly done? Is it because he denied witch? Is that it? Did he deny witches back then? Did he say something about witches and it pissed her off? And this is also that he believes in a witch? I don't know. <laughs> like, okay, so maybe Maria. Who else? Shannon? Cannon? One of the servants, maybe? Because if this is a person that is using Beatrice, uh, because they'd have to set all this up, right? All of this murder, so which makes me think maybe it's not Maria after all. Someone who's capable, who knows the area well, and who could actually pull off this 
big murder spree. Ugh, I don't know. Okay, so she was not manifested. So someone's anger at Badler manifested by Atariche and kicked this whole thing into effect? Did he do something against Kinzo? I'm like really trying to think of who on Rokunjima. Like a family member or one of the servants. Beato's cold eyes felt as though they were accusing me of some kind of sin. It felt, on the face of it, as though she was still holding a grudge for some way I treated her and was criticizing me for it. However, I obviously couldn't remember doing anything like that to her, and Beato had said so herself. I just can't imagine little sweet Badler doing something that would make somebody so angry that they would murder a whole bunch of people. <laughs> there was no link between us six years ago. Six years ago, no person called Beatrice existed for me. All right, there's a the red truth. So it's something against. So it's something against a human. It's got to be against a human who manifested Beatrice. This is what the answer arc is going to be. It's going to be finding out what this ultimate sin was, and then once we figure out what the sin is, hopefully everything will go back to normal, and nobody will have to die. それは<笑> The sin I am now demanding that you remember is not between Ushurmiya Badler and Beatrice. It's like she's angry on somebody's behalf. <laughs> Even she doesn't know. それはそなたに。そう感じる何かがあるのではないか。俺に何の罪があるってんだ。後ろ Oh. So that confirms what I said. So, because of the sin, because this is all. Because, yeah, of course, Beatrice, like, she really goes in on Badler. Like, this is all for him. This is all to. The whole thing about confirming that witches exist. This seemed to be the big thing of this, like, this whole game. But now, we're kind of getting to the crux of it, which is. He can't remember doing something to somebody, and because of that, that person is killing a bunch of people. So that kind of makes me believe even less that it's Maria, because Maria is a child. She has no way of setting this up and killing people, unless she enlisted somebody to do the murders for her. So I'm just trying to think, who else? Ugh. It's got to be somebody on who lives on Rokunjima. So Kinzo, Jessica, Kraus, uh, Natsui, or the servants. 
and I don't have any reason to believe that Kraus or Natsui or Jessica would have this much of a grudge against Badler. Kinzo, maybe? The servants, maybe? He doesn't seem to have much of a relationship with Canon. He doesn't seem to know much about Canon. Oh, but Shannon! Oh, didn't she have, like, a crush on Badler or something? And Badler had a crush on her? <gasps> Ooh, maybe that's it. Maybe. Maybe she's upset that he left her. And he kind of forgot about her. Oh, maybe. That seems a little dramatic <laughs> for basically like a childhood crush. But that's the only thing I can think of right now. Like, Canon maybe might have some sort of grudge against uh, Badler. Maybe this is something that we didn't even, we don't even know about yet. This is something that maybe because Badler doesn't remember, we, the audience, have not heard about it yet. So it could be something that is just going to completely come out of nowhere. It could be it could be a servant that we've never even met before. Because there's multiple servants here. Then we go back to the whole question of how many humans are actually on the island. Maybe there secretly is somebody that's been hiding out this whole time. Yeah. Wow, poor Badler. He's got to deal with that on top of everything. はあ。はあ。な、何を訳わかんねえこと言ってんだ。俺がみんなを殺したって言うのかよ。俺は殺人鬼か。そなたが直接手を下すわけではない。しかし、そなたが罪を犯したからこそ。Okay. Okay, so he did something six years ago, the last time he was here, and they waited specifically until they knew Badler was going to be at this conference for this whole thing to go in motion. So the true answer is, if Badler could go back in time, just never go back to Rokunjima and none of this would happen. <laughs> just never go back. <laughs> So if he remembers the sin, maybe none of this will happen. Maybe. Maybe that's what needs to happen, is in the answer arc. It's slowly, he's piecing together what's happening, who's behind it, what his sin is. And then once he figures it out and he can apologize to the person, maybe the, the deaths won't happen.俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が俺が
できやしない事件に俺の存在なんか関係ないのさわけのわかんねえことを言って俺を混乱させるんじゃねえ I began to remember that the ranger I was pounding down were cold. Her not repeating it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not true. Because she says sometimes she deliberately doesn't say things in red to fuck with him. The rain earlier had just hurt. But now I felt a tormenting cold from those raindrops. Wow, she's just still upset that he can't remember. <laughs> Oh, she looks pissed. ああ、何にも思い出せねえな。何も思い出せぬというか。Wait, she's talking to herself? それで良いのだ。かけることに意味がある。うん。そうかもしれぬな。ならばこれにて。わらわの未練も。ゲームも。ネンデフォーゲーム、オッケー。そなたはどうする?さあな。わらわはもう何の興味もない。Wow, she went from like cackling and having such a great time to now she's just like, I'm done now. I'm so confused right now. あとのことはすべて我らが終わらせる。そなたはすべてを忘れて。枕に顔をうずめ。羽の布団は。そなたをすべてから優しく守ってくれるだろう。あと片付けを。頼む。任せよ。あとのことはすべて任せ。眠。The witch who had questioned Badler hid herself. The other witch, who had appeared from behind, remained. She was certainly identical, the same witch, but her expression was somehow indifferent and ice cold. A far cry from the one before, who, though apparently drunk, had at least been in high spirits. Hey! <laughs> Witch said nothing back. Her eyes were as ice cold as Battler's shoulders. She was clearly a different person from the one who had first appeared on that balcony. The witch looked hard into my eyes and gave two small shakes of the head. Even without words, I was able to gather she was expressing some kind of disappointment. Without saying anything, the witch turned on her heels. After that, only Badler remained, the cold rain still beating down on him. His study was in the middle of a lively party. It seems that Gap was making fun of Regalia, teasing her over some stupid triviality. The triviality. They were spitting, Leah, 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 Gap, Gap, Gap at each other. Kinto and Ronave had opened a new bottle and were enjoying the show. Oh, 
マリアのテストは文句なしに合格点であったぞ。So I was right, Mari is going to be the new head. I had a feeling that、uh, she was probably going to be the one for some reason. It's weird to have Kinso actually say something positive, though. I wish I could see what her test was like. <laughs> Maybe hearing Kenzo just talked about like alchemy and stuff, and he was like, oh, all right. I like this girl after all. It seemed that Kenzo was dead drunk. He laughed towards Beato with the same level of excitation as the time they'd left for the tests. However, Ronave and Virgilia instantly noticed the change in her enthusiasm. Gap also froze her expression and went silent. Ha 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 ha! How did you do that, Beato Riche? I'm a サケが足りぬか魚が足りぬかどしゃぶりを浴びながら牛でも丸焼きにしようかおお悪くないロノウェ早速準備をせよベアトリーチェよバトラのテスト結果は後だまずはスペアリブで乾杯と行こうではないか
何かございましたらいつでもお呼びを。After a single bow, Ronave turned into a cloud of gold butterflies and hid himself. Regalia turned Gap from a sculpture into a group of gold butterflies, and then turned into a cloud of them herself, which mixed in with the others and disappeared. In the study made untidy by drinking, Beatrice stood still, alone. Since the time she had returned, her expression hadn't changed in the slightest. However, when she saw the fallen empty wine bottles and scattered cheese plates, her brow furrowed and she looked a bit displeased. And when she whispered, disappear, in that instant, the room flashed and was tidy again, as though nothing had ever happened. So, like, I'm curious, the test has been done, Maria has won, although Kinzo's not even around anymore, so does it, does it really matter? Uh, the... The clock has struck midnight, so at this point it should be wrapping up. She said the game is over, so I'm wondering if we're going to get it back to Angie at some point before this chapter is over. The reception chairs were neatly arranged and there was no wine or cheese. There were no stains where things had been spilled, nor were there any scattered trash. To the contrary, even the air had frozen over and enough to make one doubt whether so many noisy people really had been in this room until just moments ago. The study had returned to total silence. In that silence, frigid study where even the air had frozen, Beatrice stood still. Then she called him in a mutter.変に見えるか。それは Wow. She's like, it's not fun anymore. Huh? And this is when we're going to get into the answer arc. She's done with the game, so the game is done, or at least, you know, the question arc version of it, it seems. Oh, Angie's not going to be happy about that. She's like, I need a chance to fix everything. So, you know, Toryo, the Yunjane, okay? Yeah, Akite, Holy Dust, the Kotobaga. Oh, my. So, no Tori, the Akita, Kara, Holy Dust. She's like a little kid who just took her ball and went home. Even that face looks like a pouty toddler. お前、どうしたんだ。なんだかさっきから自分とは関係ないなんて言ってみせたが、どうせ言葉遊びだろ。お前の顔に書いてあるぜ。俺を恨んでるってな。お前に恨みなどないと、何度言えばわかるのか。わらわはそなたが罪を残したその当時に存在
俺も決着がつかねえのは残念だが気が向いたらぜひまた誘ってくれよなその時は謹んでご辞退させてもらうけどよ<笑> intentionally spoke in a teasing kind of tone but Beato showed no reaction Badler hung his head and clicked his tongue 何度も何度も10月4日と5日をぐるぐる過ごしたわけだがようやくこれでお役ごめんだなこれであさってには船が来るそうさそして船着き場には海猫も戻ってくる俺はようやく六軒島名物のあのニャーニャーいう鳴き声を聞けるわけだ何しろ島に来た時は天気のせいか全然いなかったからな海猫の鳴く頃に全ては終わるってわけだ終わり終わりおしまいおしまいせいぜいすら何をそなたは勘違いしておるのかん何をだって何も終わらぬとわらこれにてすべては放置される。So he's just gonna be stuck in purgatory forever, never gonna be able to solve the game or win the game. ゲームは忘れられ。万丈の駒はそのままに放置される。進みも戻りも、取りも取られもしない。勝ちもなく、負けもなく、引き分けすらもない。ただ放置されるのだ。つまりは。おしまいってことだろ違うわらわの手番にて永遠にゲームが止まるそなたの番は来ないだから勝ちも負けも引き分けもないかつてのわらわはそなたにそうされるわけにはいかなかったそなたに勝つという目的があったからだしかしそれに興味を失っただからこれ以上手番を進める意味がもう何もない俺に手番が来ないというのはどういう意味なんだ I thought that Beto getting tired of the game meant I'd be released and I'd be able to escape Rokunjima but for some reason the meaning of Beto's repeated words about the difference between abandoning the game and settling it was starting to bother me Just what she had been, oh,、uh, just what has she been saying, and why the bad mood? Suddenly, I heard a voice from behind me. When I turned around, there was someone who I thought I might or might not remember from somewhere. Finally, we get to see Angie again. A mysterious girl with no light in her eyes was standing there. It's gotta be Angie, right? Oh, no! コマをそのままに蓋を閉じられるということゲームは終わらないまま永遠に止め置かれるあんたが元の世界へ戻ることのできる唯一の方法はベアトに勝利することだけつまりベアトがゲームを放棄しちゃうってことはわかる Suddenly in another place there was a girl wearing a bright pink dress I had a feeling I'd met her somewhere too, but I couldn't remember. More important was the meaning of the word she said. The game being abandoned means, huh? ハートの首輪にでもくくりつけて飛ばしてしまうようなものかしら冗談じゃないわベアとそんなつまらないゲームを見に私たちははるばるここまで来たわけじゃないのよこれでゲームをお開きなんて冗談じゃないわラムダに同じよ私はバトラを勝利させあなたを敗北させてのたうち回らせるためにやってきたのよまだその目的を達していないこんなところでゲーム放棄されて逃げ出されたんじゃたまらないわ。キョーラを失望させるゲームの幕切れとなったことは認めよう。しかし、この茶会のホストたるわらわは
何しろ気まぐれ今日が覚めればもてなす術など知らぬもとよりそれがわらわの魔女たるゆえんのはず何も問題はなかろう確かにあなたの競技には反しないわ私は認めないわよふざけんじゃないわよあんたにどんだけ肩入れしたと思ってんのよここまでお膳立てさせてこれではいおしまいふざけんじゃないわよわらわは飽きたとそう言っているそれ以上もいいかもないそうはいかないわよあんたにはこのゲームを続けてもらうわバトラーに勝利したいんでしょ勝って屈服させたいんでしょもう一息じゃないねえそ<笑>そこで俺に振るんじゃねえ<笑>ただ俺にも意見はある言わせてくれ<laughs> that face always cracks me up of hers. She looks like a little mad kitty cat. I don't know why. <laughs> it's a little mouth, too. I have to say, 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 I have to Maybe if he says, like, let me try and figure out what this sin is, give me the chance to try and figure it out. And that will maybe be the key, like, the key to winning the game, is he just has to find out what this person, whoever Beatrice is, is so upset with him at for forgetting. There she is. I can't wait for that moment where hopefully Angie tells him who she is. Suddenly, even Gretel was there. And everyone was criticizing Beto for being irresponsible. Oh,どうやらわらわが無責任だと罵られる最大の理由はバトラが対戦相手として留まっているからということらしいならばバトラお前もまたわらわと同様に対戦相手を降りてくれぬか それでならわらわは批判されることもない。俺が降りると露見島を出られるのか？出られるわけもなかった。Well, <laughs> that's not much of an incentive. <laughs> He's like, you gotta work with me. You're gonna give me something. Why would I agree to that? ふざけないで。なんて無責任な人なの？あんたはこれだけ大勢の人間を殺した。しかも。魔女の力によって何度も何度も無言らしい殺し方でその責任を取らず逃げ出すなんて絶対に許せない責任ほうわらわはどのようにしてその責任とやらを取ればいいのか決着をつけるまで戦いなさいバトラは正面の責に座り
俺がここにある限り逃げるなんて許さねえぞ聞いてるのかこの無責任魔女めなんとか言ってみろってんだ After I yelled at her, Beato went silent for a while. Whether my words had reached her, or whether she was thinking about something completely different, I couldn't tell. But for a while she was silent, gazing at me with an expression I could read no emotion from. And when she realized I noticed, she averted her gaze. Then she turned her back to me and said this. <laughs> キョーラは仰せるわけか。ならばとう。そもそもそこにいる男に笑わの対戦相手たる資格があるのかどうか。資格？当然。さっきのテストとやらのことだぜ。何をする気？あ、あんたまさか。これより。そなたに笑わの対戦相手たる資格があるかどうかそれを問うよいかバトルその資格が認められればわらわは席にとどまりゲームを続けようそして勝敗の決着がつくまで永遠に戦い続けることを約束しようへっ俺には元よりその覚悟はあるぜしかしその資格がなかったなら Maybe I'm guessing the one question he has to answer in order to be qualified is what is the sin? That's the the overlying that's what this whole thing seems to be about for her. そうなたは消えよ。対戦相手が消えればゲームもない。わらわは堂々とここを立ち去れる。今日らもよろしいか。口出しは無用。どうさ、お好きなようにパトラ、あんた、しっかり答えるのよ。資格があるからこそ、俺はここにいるんだろう。何も怯えることなんざねえぜ。ま、まさか。What? それではバトル赤で復唱してもらおう。What's <笑> <laughs> oh, Angie knows something. Do you know something? Like, is this from your, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like, her research that she did, she knows something about Beatrice, and Beatrice is about to trap Battler somehow, like, by locking him into a red truth. Oh my gosh, what is going on? What is this? What is this? What is this? When Gretel yelled, Beato glared at her. Then her form was wiped away in an instant. Oh shit. うるさい。そなたはしばらく席を外せ。今日らもであるぞ。口出しをするならば。容赦せぬ。邪魔はしないわ。どうぞご自由に。せっせよ。まずいでしょうが。あいつ、決起をバトラを。なんだと。あいつ。何を企んでやがれ。それでは資格を問う。面白いな。普段のゲームが攻守が逆になった。これは最後の最後でとても貴重な体験だ。Very <笑> very end. So I'm assuming this is going to end soon. よいか。心してまずは聞け。まずはわらわが赤で語る。わらわは黄金の魔女ベアトリーチそして後ろ宮金蔵の孫いや後ろ宮バトラと戦うためにそう、I'm wondering this whole thing about like her 
Like, Beatrice, her whole thing is about having him acknowledge the witch. Quote-unquote, the witch. Is the game actually to get him to acknowledge something else, this sin, whoever this person is, that has this grudge, and the witch is just, like I said, an alter ego. So this whole person, this person, assuming it's a human, set all this whole game up just for Badler to get him to atone for a sin. Because, yes, like, this whole thing has been, like, mostly, like, yeah, a lot of people are dying in the process, but it's all, it's been all about Badler. Okay, we're getting into his mom, okay. It's family history here. Huh? Beto urged me with the same indifferent tone. But I don't have a clue what she's trying to do. I've done absolutely nothing wrong that I'd hate to be confronted with, and there's nothing that I'm hiding. There's nothing she could demand from me to repeat that would cause me any trouble. So, why something like this? I feel like that smile's gonna get wiped off his face pretty fast here. Is Badler like a secret bastard child of somebody? Like, there go, we're getting into his lineage here. What's going on? It feels like she's, yeah, she's trying to trap him in some sort of trick question, I think. Oh! Ooh! Whoa! What? What? Okay. All of a sudden, my throat closed. It was I was suddenly assaulted by shortness of breath. It felt as if I had been choked. What's going on? One more time. So that wasn't his. So that wasn't his real mom. うわ。後ろに合わせるから生まれた。なんだ。さっきまでは簡単にできてたのに、急に赤がうまくできなくなったぞ。服装を拒否するの。拒否なんかじゃねえ。なぜかうまくいかねえんだ。俺は後ろに
And that's why I couldn't pass the test. He was never an Usha or me to begin with. Not by blood. What? I'm so... But he's saying he's Ushurmiya Battler. But then she's saying that he is not Kinzo's grandchild, Ushurmiya Battler. Right? Is he that only in name, not by blood? Yeah, but not the blood. He's not Kinzo's grandson. Wow. Seems like a clone or something? Like, what? I don't... <laughs> you are a different person. Wow. So, wait, is he... <laughs> so there is an Ushurumiya battler who is Ushurumiya Asumi's son. But that's not this guy. <laughs> what? No. Oh, this poor boy, man. He's like, oh my gosh, this, finding out that like he's not who he thinks he is. That's so sad. After losing his whole family, that might not actually be his family. なぜ俺が僕らから生まれたと言えないんだこんなバカなことがあると言うのか苦しむことはない我らは遊ばぬこれにてチェックメイトだそなたは後ろ宮アスムの息子ではないそんなバカなそなたは誰後ろ宮バ
残念よバブルあなたにベアトリーチェの対戦相手たる資格がなかったなんて And then there was Angie. Angie seemed to know something. I want to know what she was going to say. Whether she knows who this person actually is, or maybe she somehow does know that Badler actually. Like, there is an imposter? I refuse to believe that. I refuse to believe that this is some sort of other guy. <laughs> ま、けも勝ちもない。ただ。対戦相手が消えるだけだ。元からいなかったというべきか。じゃあよ。俺は誰なんだよ。俺はおやじやお袋の子じゃ。俺は誰なんだ。おふくろの子じゃないってんなら。なんだよ。縁もゆかりもない赤の他人の子だとか。そう言い出すのかよ。それならば金蔵の血は引いていないことになるな。いずれにせよ。そなたにこのゲームの対戦資格はない。バカな